Hi, super mom. Alena here, your mommy tantrum specialist. And today I have a special podcast, special episode of the Zen Superman podcast. We are going to be talking about all the yes buts. So I have a list of um, not even questions, but reasons why there are super moms, busy, overwhelmed, anxious moms who have a big heart. You want to stop yelling at your kids, but there's so much going on that you cannot help it. You're trying to keep calm, trying to be patient with them. Like, don't, uh, don't test me. I'll be a good mom. I'm not going to yell today. And then anyways, it started yelling out. And if you've been listening to my podcast for a while, now you know also why and why those parenting techniques don't work. Why this is not a DIY approach. You cannot do it as a self like do it yourself project, it does not work. And if you've listened to any of my podcast episodes, you might know why. <laughs> but there's still the next stage. So now you realize, okay, it might take some help from a professional. I might need to work with somebody, but I still have all those questions and fears. So what do I do next? So that's what we are going to address in this podcast episode. Okay. So this episode is for you, especially if you've been, and I, I keep getting messages like there are people who listen to all of the episodes. <laughs> this is going to be episode number 41. Each of them has about half an hour. So it's around 20 hours of listening. Are you crazy? Please. <laughs> you don't have to listen to everything. And I know I love you and I, I appreciate you. And it's, I feel honored that you are willing to spend so much time listening to a podcast, but it's not necessary to listen to everything, every single one of them before you feel you're ready. You don't have to do that. Right. This is because I would like you to realize this is part of your fear as well, playing on you. You not feeling safe, you thinking like, if only I learn enough, then I'll have more feeling of more safety and thinking that it's going to work for me. I will have more confidence that it is going to work, that I'm not going to lose my time, my money, and more importantly, my hope. Because a lot of women tell me like the first thing you gave me was actually hope. Even before we started working together, I finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I saw somebody who went through exactly the same challenges as I did. So typically I work with moms who are super high achievers with amazing career, super smart brain. Uh, many of them are expatriates. I don't know if it's my face or my accent or what it is, but <laughs> I work with lots of moms who have left their country of origin and now together with their family, they live abroad, which brings a whole new level of stress and challenges. Uh, I work mo with moms because of, of that, like br smart brain, um, preference then what we do, we want to cut off from our feelings and from our body. So our body is just a machine that's supposed to push through and work hard and get us where we want. So we keep pushing it, ignoring any signs of emotions or any body signals, because it's like, that's weak. I can just get through it with my willpower and discipline and just like relentless power horse. But then it backfires, right? And this kind of healing, the reason why you're still getting angry at your kids, why you transfer your stress onto them, why you're burning out as a super mom, why you're resentful of your husband and everybody else who's, who are, they are not helping you enough and they are just there to take, 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 and you have nothing else to give to them or even to yourself. This is where it backfires on you, right? This smart brain. And you come to a point when you realize, okay, I'm ready. I'm listening. I finally admitted I need help. But then this whole set of new questions is like, Ooh, where do we even start? So comment number one that I'm getting, especially now in the summer, like it's not a good time now. We are on holidays and uh, we will be visiting families and there are so many events and we are so busy. And I'm like, mm hmm. Yep. You're absolutely right. And does that mean that you will pause yelling until September when uh, kids are back at school? Most likely not. Like what happens at those times when you're even more stressed than usual? Isn't it true that you usually yell even more than usual? 
And then what you remember from your holidays is just those moments of drama where you start your day thinking like, oh my goodness, finally, I've been waiting for this the entire year. Like, let's just go and have fun with family. This will be so awesome. And then something happens and you lose your patience, you snap and you're angry and it's spoiling everybody's day. Like if your your kids are having tantrums and because you are having your tantrum in response, it's just like everybody is mad, everybody is sad, tired, and then that's what the day is about. How sad is that? Isn't this the best time to start getting the help you need? Well, duh, my answer is yes. <laughs> Because what I do has two components. One of the components, by the way, if you've never been to my uh, to any of my free trainings where I explain what I do, I'm going to link it. I'm taking a note. Link to free mommy tantrum training. I'm going to give you the link so that you can listen. That's where I unpack really, because I don't want to do a sales pitch here, really. I just want you to know if you've never been to any of my trainings, just briefly, what I do is I help you clean up your past trauma because spoiler alert, that's where your anger is coming from. That's where you cannot, why you cannot control it because it's a trauma time machine. So whatever happened in your past, you felt helpless, out of control, yelled at, not heard. I have to do as I'm told and nobody else cares and people are crossing my boundaries physically, emotionally. They don't care about me. I just have to be in the line and constantly a hyper overachieve just to be seen and appreciated. Otherwise I'm criticized and yelled at all the time. That is my dear called a developmental trauma. Even if you have never been uh, sexually abused, there was no violence. Uh, there was nothing of the shock trauma, like the heavy PTSD kind of thing that you might have now that might, it might be all combined, but even if you had a happy childhood, none of that happened to you. What I just described, like demanding, yelling parents who could not control their stress, that's a developmental trauma. It needs a specific kind of developmental generational trauma therapy. That's what I do in my one-to-one -one sessions. That's one half of the Zen Superman program. The other half of the Zen Superman program is a mental fitness course. And that's the thing that's needed for you to increase your level of stress resistance. And I love using the analogy of a pilot flying a plane. What do they do when they get in a storm? When there's like wind turbulence and they are trying to land the plane in the middle of a snow blizzard and the lights go off at the runway because like whatever happened. So the pilot is like blind, out of control, plane is shaking, people are screaming. What if the pilot suddenly started running around saying like in the radio, oh my goodness, we are going to die. The plane is going to crash. I'm completely out of control. There are a million things I should be doing. Oh, I have no idea. And why you people at the back here are screaming. It's making me even more nervous and it's your fault. Ah! And would run away from the cockpit. Super silly example, right? But that's exactly what you're doing. In those moments when the stress around you is increasing when there's more and more pressure that's when you need to increase your stress resistance aka your mental fitness level so that you can match it up and you can stay laser focused calm out of the billion things i could be paying my attention to what is the number one most important <laughs> Let's do it now. Full focus. Let's forget everything else. Okay, that's done. Number two, full focus. Let's do it now. That's it. That's what you need to have the instinct to go, especially when it's triggering, especially when your kids are having tantrums, your husband is like avoiding running away or making like being mad with you as well on top. Like the more pressure, the more stress, the less time you have, the more you want to increase your level of mental fitness so that you don't freak out and you stay calm, clear headed, seeing exactly, okay, what is it that needs to happen first? What are the priorities and do it one by one without getting caught up in that trauma of yours that we clean up. Okay. The advantage of the mental fitness course is that it's self-paced. It's already done. It's inside my program. You get access to it the moment you sign up. So this is the beautiful thing about it that I tell to moms who are telling me, yeah, but we are on holidays, so I cannot be taking any calls because there are kids around, da, 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 da. That's okay. That's okay. You can start with that mental fitness course, which is actually what you need right now. 
the more busy, the less structure and the more relaxed you want to be, you can start practicing. You can start increasing your level of mental fitness already, right? And those are short videos that I have, like three to 10 minutes maximum. So it's not like, oh my goodness, every, uh, at the end of every evening, like I have to do one hour video to learn and take notes. No, 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 no. It's very practical. It's very quick and effective because all of my clients are busy moms. Nobody has one hour to sit and study every night. And also, how far did all the studying get you? This is not about your smart brain. You already know a lot. That's not the problem, that you don't know enough. It's the practice, it's the accountability, it's you making it part of your day-to-day -day life. So that's what I'm going to walk you through in that course. You will start applying for the first time in your life. You will have the accountability, the motivation, and the practical little tiny tools. It takes 30 seconds at a time to practice. And you will get the support to start practicing because it's like muscles. No, you don't have any muscles in your brain, but there are the neural pathways like between the, the cells of your brain and they can see it even in the MRI scans. They could see it. How does your brain fire up? Where is the biggest activity when you're stressing, when you're yelling? And where does your brain fire up when you're calming down, when you're laser focused? When, when you have access to all of your smart ideas, your creativity, your intuition, okay? Because you can access, you can practice to be able to access that part of your brain, even in the middle of the biggest tornado of your life, okay? That's where the practice comes. And this is something that you could be doing. And I would invite you to start doing even when you're on holidays, because the results will be amazing. Imagine you could think back about this holidays, like, okay, finally. Much less drama, much less shouting and yelling. If the kids had any problems, you were able to stay calm. So they calm down faster as well. And you were able to flip it quickly into making everybody okay again, including yourself, focusing what's great about it and just recharging the energy, not feeling like, the day when you come back from your holidays, like, oh my goodness, now I need holidays just to recover from the holidays, right? Which is often what happens. Okay. So that's why that argument, like, I don't have any time now because it's the summer we are, on we are on vacation. Like, no, that's exactly the best time to start practicing. Okay. Because then even looking forward, okay, the summer will be gone. Then we go into September. I don't know about your local schedule, wherever you're listening from this podcast, but here in Europe, most of the countries, we, st we go back to school in September. So then it's another crazy period, right? Because everybody is adjusting back to the new schedule. If uh, your kids start to go to nursery, daycare, school, they will need some adaptation period, two, three weeks, just to get all of their supplies, everybody to get used to the new time routines and everything. <sighs> September, lost. Like, yeah, you think you will have to, time to do anything in September on top? No. Then comes all of those celebrations, including Halloween. And then in Europe, we have another holidays in, uh, in October, November. And then you will start preparing for Christmas, right? <laughs> it never ends. Please see this. This never ends. Your mommy's stressful calendar will end only the moment when your kids get out of the nest. All of them. How long is that going to be? How many more years? Do you want to wait till then? Meaning that when they leave, you will have more time for yourself, but that's also the end of your opportunity to change your relationship with them, right? And to show up as the mom you want to be. Because when they leave, then your window is kind of like closed into what their childhood was and how they're going to remember you as a mom. So you cannot wait until they leave. Not even talking about it. I'm I have two, three, four moms of teenagers inside the program. It is much more difficult. Yes, it is possible to turn it around and recover from you yelling. Yes, you have already given them some trauma. You have already developed them into people pleasers, victims, like their voices in their head. You are already in their head criticizing them and yelling at them. Even those moments when you don't, they have that stress reaction, that trauma reaction in their head. Yes. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If they are beyond 10 years old, like older than 10, they have that already. 
the good news is you can start recovering from it. You can. You will never take it away what happened, but you can may help them heal so that it doesn't break them and it doesn't turn them into you when they are parents. Okay? But it does take much more time. That's why I tell all the time the parents of small babies, small toddlers, the sooner you start, the better, the more time you have to recover and repair and make sure that you stop any further damage. Right? So, this one is about time. <laughs> there will never be a better time than now. <laughs> That's like the <laughs> short answer <laughs> to that complaint. Like, yeah, now it's not a good time. Well, now it's the best time. Okay. And you will thank yourself later. When you look back three, four months from now and you will, you will look back to how, where you started, you'll be like, holy moly, I should have done it. It's like before I had kids. That's what I would wish <laughs> that I did this before I had my daughter. So that I could feel less guilty and less ashamed. But yeah, you cannot change the past. You can just make better informed decisions <laughs> based on that right now. Okay. So that was the first one about time. Then, yeah, another, it's, it's related to time. But there's often the concern because when I start talking about trauma therapy, uh, a lot of moms go on alert. Like, what? Therapy? What are you talking about? So either they are thinking like, no, therapy for me. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't need. I had a happy childhood or I don't even remember what happened to me. I guess my mom yelled at me, but whose mom doesn't? Like, why? There? What? <laughs> then there are moms who have some experience with therapy or counseling, but that was the talk therapy or like EMDR, CBT, you name it, whatever, whatever timeline, something methods. So they have already done something. It took them months and years and it didn't work. Yes, it worked partially because at least they could talk about it. They could rationalize it, analyze it in their smart brain to understand why. But it did not help. It did not stop the yelling because that's not where the yelling is. If it was in your smart brain, then you could override it. And just by reading one parenting book, which says, well, don't yell at your kids because you heard them. And of course you understand. So you would stop yelling, right? No, wrong. <laughs> you know all of these things. <laughs> You've talked about it, maybe even to a therapist, and still you're yelling because therapist is not equipped to help you deal, heal developmental trauma. They don't have those tools. All they do is they ask you, how are you feeling and what happened in the past? And you spend time like dissecting and feeling even worse because you start remembering all those terrible things that might have happened to you in the past. That's not what I do. That's not what developmental trauma therapy is about. My techniques that I learned, studied, practiced, got certified in, <laughs> have experience with, they work with the subconscious mind, uh, which is very visual and creative. So most of them feel like funny visualizations, but they're actually extremely powerful. I just had, I've, I'm not going to mention any names. I, will, I protect the privacy of my clients. But if you're listening right now, because I think you're a listener of this podcast. Hi, you're an inspiration. You see, I'm going to talk about your story. I just started working with a doctor, like a medical doctor, a psy psychiatrist. And she was skeptical at the beginning because she was thinking, well, I know how the brain works. I know how I should be helping myself. I even did a classic therapy as a client. I did ask for all the help and nobody was able to help me. I'm not able to help myself. Like, why do you think you're going to be able to do that? And I told her, because I don't do what you and all of these guys are doing. I work with your subconscious mind, not with your smart brain. And you cannot be doing your own subconscious mind, like developmental trauma surgery, if you're staying in your brain, trying to think about it, trying to rationalize it. It's like those two are not... <laughs> compatible they you cannot be using both of them at the same time and effectively heal your subconscious mind through your smart brain it works differently and i also told you i can sit here and do all of my blah 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 convincing talking about all of my clients who have had amazing success and it will do nothing because it's still just talking to your smart brain you need to feel it because it's something that you've never experienced before how it works when I pull out your subconscious mind who's so creative and playful and when we start playing and using it for your benefit to clean up the past. 
So I told her, that's why I have 100% money back guarantee, because you can jump in, we can do first one or two sessions, you will get access to the mental fitness course as well, of course. And then you decide, is it something that helps me or not? And if the answer is no, for whatever reason, I'm going to give you your money back, you're gone. You didn't lose anything apart from 45 minutes, that's the, the length of one session. And so she took that leap of faith. We just had a first uh, session, what, on Tuesday? Today is Thursday, two days ago. And at the end of the session, she was sitting there and like, this was so weird, so weird. I have no other words how to describe that. So weird, but so good. <laughs> like, how did you do that? What did just happen? So her brain, her smart brain started kicking in again and trying to analyze it. And it couldn't, <laughs> right? So this is what's possible. I know it works. My clients know it works. If you want to find out if it works for you, then please know it is not going to make you feel re-traumatized. Like you are not going to drown in the pain again. We are not going to f f like fish through all your skeletons in the closet. We are not going to put it all in one big pile and make you feel really bad about what a terrible life you're having. No, none of that. Those subconscious mind methods that I'm using, actually, I can drill down, I can find exactly where it's coming from, drill down very fast, heal it, and like put, and I don't want to say put a band-aid, because this is not a band-aid, we heal it, we take it out, and we replace, we rewrite actually, and they say it's never too late to have a happy childhood, because we rewrite a lot of your memories, we make a different endings to all of those movies in your head, okay? But you have to feel it, how powerful that is when it happens, because it is totally doable for you too. And that's what even that psychiatrist mom, she was like, I have no idea. Like, I've never been to this place in my head, but it felt so good. <laughs> and she was like still high <laughs> a little bit. And I don't do hypnosis. So you will know exactly what you're saying, what the images are that you have in your head and what's happening. You're fully in control. Okay. But... Why I'm saying this, so it is possible, Not it's unlike any other kind of talk therapy or whatever, it is very fast and effective because I can go <laughs> dive in, take out one trauma in one session, 45 minutes, one hour max. I tell my clients book one hour just in case and also to have like a breather afterwards because you'll be, you'll be flying high, <laughs> you'll be feeling much more at calm and at peace. So just in, book some little bit of time afterwards so that you can enjoy at least for, uh, for five minutes afterwards uh, that state before you need to come back to reality and start integrating. Uh, but it is effective. It is fast. You're not going to feel the session drowning in pain and sadness. On the opposite, you will feel much lighter, more at peace, more free from all the links and ties and cords and baggages from your past. And did I count all the differences with the talk therapy let me check yeah and on top for those who really like their smart brain does not want to let them go because it doesn't feel safe it still feels weird and what is this lady i've never heard about her i have no idea what those methods are like is she just making it is she faking it like what is this then that's why i have the 100 percent money back guarantee so that it's in the contract, we sign the contract so that you can see that if for whatever reason it doesn't work for you, you get your money back, you didn't lose anything. Knocking on the wood, not to jinx it, still until today. I've been practicing these uh, trauma methods uh, with, on my clients for the last year and a half at the time of this recording. Nobody ever wanted their money back because it worked. They got what they wanted. So this was, yeah, how long will it take? I don't want to drown in pain. My husband, yeah. Ha, husbands, partners, exes, your own parents. All of these people, you might be thinking they have even worse influence at your kids. They are even like <laughs> breaking them even more than you're yelling because there might be somebody who's yelling even more, who's even more harsh with them, who's causing even more trauma. So then you're thinking like, well, what does it change? They are even worse than me. So do I need to do anything? Like these kids are going to be messed up anyways. Really? You are the most important people in the, uh, person in their lives. 
for your kids. You're their mother. They have the strongest bond with you. And you can do a lot of damage control and healing with your kids. Even if there are lots of dangerous, unhealthy, other relationship dynamics around them, you can help them become stronger by you not yelling, by you having access to that unconditional love and strengthening your kids. But you can do that only once you learn to do it for yourself. Only once you feel you can love yourself unconditionally, that you're worth it. This is what becomes possible once you clean up all of that developmental trauma. Because all of these voices in your head coming back from your parents, teachers, whomever who was telling you, not good enough, have to try harder, criticizing you, comparing you to others, telling you you have to hyperachieve, overachieve, you have to be super successful, having lots of money and lots of like success with your work, whatever have uh, 1000 kids so that you can feel like an amazing mom never yell again all of those voices in your head that is a trauma that is the survival mechanism how you learned to deal with that criticism from the outside you took those nasty voices from the outside you put them in your head and now you use them to beat yourself up to become better like that's your masochistic tendency like i will criticize myself so that i improve before anybody else notices how bad i am and can criticize me i will rather criticize myself and drive myself to craziness to be the super mom do it all as perfectly like 1000 percent as possible so that nobody else can find a fault with me because i cannot bear that pain anymore i've had enough of that in my childhood people criticizing me i can't do that anymore sound familiar So only once you heal this, only once you know from the core of your being, I'm enough, I'm worthy of all the love, no matter what, even if I make a mistake, even if I'm not perfect, even if I yell at my kids, I am perfect, I am worthy of love, I'm doing my best, and I love myself the way I am right now. Only then you are able to give, to teach, to demonstrate to role model this kind of energy and attitude to your kids, which is what will strengthen them. So that no matter how many people there are around telling them, like, you're just so stupid, you don't get this, or why you're so slow, why you're so ugly, why you're so fat, Uh, I don't want to be friends with you, you don't have enough money, you don't have the latest cool phone, like whatever harassment there is online, offline, you are not able to support your kids effectively If you feel like you are not cool enough, that you are not smart or beautiful enough to to deserve feeling good about yourself, right? How do you want to teach your kids how to stand up to bullies and criticism if you cannot do it for yourself? You see, that's why it's so important that you start with yourself. Especially if they have lots of toxic influence around them, right? You should have started yesterday already. And I know you're trying, I know you are, but what you've been doing is not effective. That's why you're here to do something else. Because that's what Einstein called the, how did he call it? The definition of insanity, repeating, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. It's the same with your yelling, it's the same with your kids' dynamic. If you keep getting in the same fights, if you keep yelling at the same moments of the day or in the same situations, and you just think, I need to do more of this or whatever you're trying to, f- to do to fix it. But if you keep getting in the same situations, duh, it's not going to work. You need to change your approach, change the attitude. And here I am to help with that. Okay. Because what I do, it works and I see it. I see it every day in every session with my clients. I see it in every group call. It's working. And no, I'm not promising uh, rainbows and unicorns and that you'll be a perfect, like 1000 perfect uh, Zen super mom in the next week. There will be ups and downs, but it will be up, upwards tendency. Okay. I just had a mom this morning send me uh, an email. What is it? How long is she in the program? Three, four weeks. She's like, yeah, but I'm now feeling down because my kids are sick and I forgot to practice. Remember the mental fitness that it takes like 30 second practice. She's like, so I even forgot to practice for a couple of days because my kids are sick. And it's just like, ah, 
So I told her, of course, this is to be expected when both of your kids are sick at the same time and you're completely like out of your breath because you cannot even sleep well during the night taking care of them and everything, like all your schedule, everything is upside down. Of course, and it's completely normal. There will be ups and downs. And what you need right now in this moment is just to nourish yourself, get as much sleep as possible, just so that your body can de-stress, can just like evacuate as much of that stress as possible so that you don't put it on your kids but it's completely normal that you're feeling overwhelmed right now even once you started doing this work with me like she's been working on it for the last three weeks but now this dip came because her kids are saying it is normal it is to be expected it's part of the journey and it's not that you're going down it's just we will get back up it's okay okay this is just to have realistic expectations Okay, because this is all part of life. You cannot predict what life is going to throw at you. If it's heavier, the challenges, the external world, like all the mess that comes your way, if it's heavier than the strength of your muscles in your brain, like to shift and be that pilot who can stay focused. If your level of mental fitness is lower than the level of the challenges, then of course you're going to lose it still. But that's why as soon as it's possible again, you will start practicing again. So that and your kids are not sick anymore and you keep practicing and then your level will be much higher. And then maybe something happens again, like you lose your job or you want to go back to a new job or whatever, like the level of stress. But you'll be here already. So it's OK. Yes, I'm feeling under pressure, but I can make I can make it. It's like if I think about my own life. I thought I was super busy when I was working in the corporate world. So I've been an expatriate since I was 24. I have been, I was working and living abroad by myself. Most of the times in countries where I did not speak the language, they did not speak English as their first language. So the amount of pressure to prove myself in a telecommunications company while my background is in sociology, psychology, like um, I know nothing about telecommunications or technologies and IT and stuff. I built up my career regardless because my skills were needed there. I found my way. But the amount of pressure I was going through every day just to prove myself that I belong and that it was a good decision to take this young girl at the position, like leadership positions, when I was at the time of my, like the career peak was when I was leaving. I was over, I was just 30, 30 something. I was in China, in Shanghai. There were people around me who were 15 years older and they were questioning me like, Rah! the pressure was on. So I thought that I could, I could do it. But my mental fitness level was, mm, I, I got close to my first burnout there in China because it was too much. And then the second time, again, when I became a mom, I thought I had it figured out, like how to make sure I don't burn out. I don't stress out. But when my daughter was born, that was actually even more (laughs) challenging job of my life because I was alone. We live in Paris. I don't have any parents here, any siblings, no friends who could just come, like who wouldn't have kids who could just come and take my daughter in the for a walk for one hour while I sleep or cook a meal for, for me, for us. Like, no, I had to do everything by myself, just alternating with my husband in those like few moments when he was out of work and he didn't have to sleep himself. Right. Too much pressure, not enough mental fitness <laughs> level, like low. This is where it comes to disconnect. Right. That's why it is so important to start your practice as soon as possible. No matter what, if you are here, if you're listening to this podcast because you want to stop yelling and you couldn't yet, then I'm hoping that I'm giving you these answers now in these episodes. I'm always trying to show you what is the next step, but I'm also hopefully letting you know to stop treating it as a do it yourself. It will take reaching out for help. And if you have any more questions about what it takes to do it, then just reach out and let me know. Okay. So I'm wishing you happy holidays. If you're enjoying the summer somewhere right now, and I hope to hear from you. What is it that resonated from you? What are the questions that you've been asking yourself that are now answered? And what are the questions that you still have? Let me know. Take care, Superman.